Hello everyone. So now that we've created our character, we're going to put it into Photoshop and we're going to start to edit it slightly, add a background, and then we'll finalize the image. So I'm going to drag in my character first. Now because the character is set to about 4K, you want to drag in the character first before you drag in any kind of background because if the background is only say 1080, then uh, your character will snap to that size, which is going to downgrade your image size. So you want to start with the character, drag that into Photoshop, and then we can start that way. Right, so we're going to add a background. You can add any background you like. Uh, I'm just going to drag this one in. And in this case, I probably could have found a better image, but <laughs> I've just dragged this one in. Uh, I'm just going to find a small detail that I'm going to add. So let's just add something like this. So instead of me uh, free transforming this and making this much bigger, that's going to um, kind of chew up some memory there. I'm just going to select a detail that I'm going to add in. So in this case, it's this shop with that uh, pavement there. So I've used that marquee tool, so rectangular marquee tool. I've selected that area. It is selected as a uh, smart object, so we need to right click on our image and go to rasterize layer. We know it's a smart image because we can see that little icon there. So if you right click, go to rasterize image, that will rasterize it. Now we can press control C, control V, so that's going to copy and paste. And now I can delete that layer. Okay, so now I can free transform this. I can either go to edit and free transform or shortcut control T on the keyboard. And then we'll just make this a lot bigger. So I will extrude this out. I'm not too sure how big I need it to be yet. So let's just keep that there for now. And I'm going to hide that and I'm going to go onto my background layer. And the background layer is currently locked and I want to delete this blue background. So I'm going to double click on this background. And that's going to create a new layer. So we can click OK. And then we need to delete this background. So the easiest thing to do is to go over to the magic wand tool here, or you can press W on the keyboard. Select that blue background. Once it's highlighted, you can hit backspace on the keyboard and that will delete that. So you can uh, deselect now, you can select away from it, or you could select any other uh, tool, let's say the marquee tool, to deselect, or you can right click and select deselect. Right, so now that that's cut out, we can go back on our layer and I'm going to move this background layer underneath. Okay, so now we've got a character standing there. So the uh, size is a little bit off, so I'm going to press Control T just to free transform this, make this a little bit bigger. Okay, that's not too bad. Let's just extrude this out even more. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay, so we'll click Enter there. And because we've got that excess image there, we don't need the, the excess there. So we're going to just delete that. So what I'll do is I'll just, whoop, I'll zoom back in. And you can hold Alt and the plus and minus to zoom in and out. And I'll, I'll use the marquee tool. Oh, it did actually undo my crop there. Let me just redo that. Let's crop back. My computer's being a little bit slow. It's uh, it's a bit slow when you're recording these videos. And I've got 3D Co open at the same time. So it's not too happy with me at the moment. I'm just going to move that over. I think that's pretty much where I had it. I can click enter. And then I'm going to use that marquee tool. Select everything. Control C, Control V, copy and paste. And then just delete that layer underneath. So we've only got that one image. So it's slightly grainy, so I'm going to uh, try and just blur that background a little bit. It's better if you just find an image that is of really good resolution. And uh, I just found this image and I've just copied and pasted that over. I've got a whole reference folder here that I use. Uh, so yeah, you might want to find a better one. There's quite a few images here that I might have been able to use. But just for this purpose, I've used this one. So we can go over to filter and let's see. Let's blur and let's do a little surface blur here just to remove some of this grain and the default settings actually aren't too bad let's maybe just bring it down a little bit 
Okay, so 12, 12, it's not looking too bad. I might just want to keep some of the grain in the foreground. So what I will do is I'll duplicate this and we can duplicate it by just dragging and dropping it down to the new layer. And that's going to duplicate. And then I'll go back to that filter blur and surface blur and then do that to the one that's on top. Now I can do that uh, so that I've got flexibility of having one that's a bit sharper and then one that's a little bit more blurry. So I could create a mask of this. So when, when I create a mask, that means that anything that I select that's black is actually gonna bring that layer underneath back. Okay, so it's gonna erase it slightly. So I'll just do this just a little bit in the background just to bring back some of that sharpness. Do that a little bit on the ground. That's okay. And then I'm gonna go back to my layer that's on top and I'm just gonna vignette these edges just to make it a little bit darker. I'm also gonna crop this before I do that because it's a little bit, a little bit too wide at the moment. So I'll just bring that back in. Okay, and then I'll add that vignette. So I'm gonna go onto my masks and then I'm gonna to go to brightness and contrast and bring that brightness way down. Okay, so we're just starting to see some of those highlights there. Now, because this is a, a, a smart a layer or smart um, adjustment, we can go back onto our brush, select the black, which is going to erase it. And I've set this to a soft brush and made it fairly big. So if I just left click on the mouse, you can see I'm starting to bring back some of that light that was underneath that layer. So in this case, I'm just gonna do this here. So it's a little light that's coming down on our character, similar to the render that we did in 3D Coat. And then that's not looking too bad. Now I didn't do too much with the feet when I was modeling this or texturing this, but I'm gonna add a slight shadow and there's multiple ways you can do this. You could select a new layer underneath the character and you could just simply paint that in. Okay, like so. And then you could use the opacity just to drop that down. And in this case, that is gonna be the quickest way of doing it. But if you had a much bigger piece and you wanted it to be very precise to the character, then what I usually do is I usually duplicate the character. I then go to image adjustments and curves and I bring this little node all the way down okay so that just makes a complete silhouette of this character we can then go to filter blur and Gaussian blur and then that's going to blur out the character so we can increase the Gaussian blur if you want to and click OK and then when you press Control T to free transform we can flip vertical and then just add that shadow in Okay, so that's a very precise way of doing it. We haven't got too much room here, so we don't need to do this. But if you wanted to add a, a character shadow, this is the quickest and easiest way to do it. So I could do that now. Uh, I don't really need to do it. But for this one, we'll drag that in. So I'll, I'll move this and make sure this shadow is underneath our character. And then I'll move this into place. Now... Here it's actually starting to move our brightness and that's because when we select on it, there's this little auto select button on. So that's gonna try and automatically select what you're clicking on. That's not always the best thing when you've got uh, masks that will assume you're clicking on that. So you can select auto select, make sure it's unticked. And now whatever I select in my layers, it's only gonna select that instead, okay. Auto select is good when you've got loads of layers and you, you're unsure where that layer was and you can click on it and sometimes you get lucky and it'll take you straight back to that layer but I usually have it uh, selected off so I can just select my layers this way okay so there's our shadow we've got our silhouette now let's just see if we can maybe just change some of the colors so I'm gonna go back into this and I'm gonna go to my color balance and let's see if we can just increase some of the yellows maybe want to look better slightly cooler I think it looks nice cooler so more towards blue, and I'm gonna bring this slightly more towards cyan, only minus one. And that's set to midtones. I could change this to highlights and maybe increase some of the warmth. No, I definitely think it looks nice cooler. I think that looks quite good. 
So it's only a minor adjustment there, but that's how we can do our slight color balance. So it's gone from a, a green haze to a much co uh, cooler blue haze. So that's a bit better there. And then we can continue editing this if you wanted to. So you could continue painting on top. You could change certain elements. I usually use this spot healing brush tool, which is just brilliant at removing these kind of textures that you don't want. It will find any texture that's closest to it and it will try and uh, mimic that texture and apply it to that image. So fantastic if you want to remove any of these kind of blemishes on the image. Let's say for example, you didn't like these lights that are in the background. You could select the image. Now I'm not sure which one it's going to do it on. I imagine it's going to be this one. And then I can use that spot healing brush tool. I'm not going to be able to use it on that. Yeah, <laughs> I'll have to flatten the image. We'll do that afterwards. Okay, so what else can we do to this? Let's move these arms down. He's currently in a T pose. So let's just move them down slightly. So I'm going to use that lasso tool. And I'm going to lasso around this area here. So I'm going to lasso around the arm and I'm going to bring it down. So with that selected, I can press Control T. That's going to free transform. And then here we can see it's starting to be there on the side. So I can just rotate this arm downwards. So you are going to need to repaint this. Oh, I don't know what's happening there. There's a slight glitch. Uh, and in fact, I'm not going to do it to where the uh, shoulder plate is. I'm only going to do it where the arm is. I don't want the shoulder plate to move. So I'm going to press Control T, free transform into place. No, my <laughs> my Photoshop is glitching slightly. Uh, sorry about that. So there we go. We've got the arm moved down. That's a bit better. And then we'll just need to paint in the rest. So anything where you need to clean this up, you can use that lasso tool and cut around it. And then I'll just use that lasso tool to select around this area and here. And if you're lucky, you might even be able to use that spot healing brush tool on that. And there we go. It's painted that in. So cool little tip there. Uh, I might even use this here. There we go. And then we'll do the same thing for this arm. I'll just bring this down, lasso around the arm, all the way around, Control T to free transform, and then move the arm. And there we go. Yeah, that's much more natural. And then I'll use that spot healing brush tool again, just to fill in that area. So that's it. I mean, you can continue painting into this, um, but this air area here that um, was a little bit bumpy. I could create a new layer. I could go into my brushes and I can continue painting. But just for a quick concept, uh, you don't really need to. Uh, especially when you just want to get this out onto the page and you want multiple iterations of the same design. You want to go back into 3D Coat and you know start painting into this uh, properly with those textures. And then you can come back in here and start making these kind of little changes. Okay, so this is looking pretty good already, and this is very rough. You know, this hasn't taken a long time. Yeah, pretty cool. So let's just maybe do some small little design changes here. If you wanted any kind of lights, we could just switch this over to a lighter color. Let's maybe just move this to a, a light blue, maybe. And maybe he's got some sort of lights on the breastplate. And then I could switch that over to a soft brush, make it white, and then just lightly dab on that just to make them glow. You know, just these kind of subtle changes are really nice. I'll go back to that chalk brush, and then I'll select this dark area here because this mask is starting to uh, kind of blend in a little bit there. So I'll just reinforce that shape. You know, little details like this. And you don't have to be really precise either. You could just use a brush and you could start drawing directly on top of it. So I could create a new layer and I, I could just make some little notes here. I can say, well, maybe this shoulder plate would, you know, kind of come up here and it would cut through there. Uh, so I'm just going to block all that bit out. Uh, let's just make this black. There we go. 
and then um, you know maybe I don't like this bit here so I'm just gonna very quickly just paint that bit out you know because the, these are just little uh, cues for you so that when you go back into the 3d coat then you can change this design uh, you might not like that little gap there so you might want to just very quickly paint that out yeah now your first design is usually uh, not going to be the last design that you you choose you know you or the first design you choose sorry. so you're gonna want to do loads of different versions of this so if you can be very quick and just very quickly paint into this you know then that's great yes yeah, so here that might look a little bit better uh, you might not like this design here so you might want to paint that out or maybe you think well there should be some sort of straps here so I want to have some sort of visual cue there that there's some sort of straps you know and then there are some of the textures that you can hunt for when you start doing uh, the actual finalized model maybe there's some sort of antenna that's coming out the back which would suggest that you need to add a little bit more detail in the back you know just all these little details I'm just going to delete that for now, uh, I'll just keep that for the layer underneath. I actually like the idea of there being some sort of antenna at the back, so I might even just add that now. Okay. Yeah, that's quite cool. And then maybe it has a red light on top. And then back to soft brush, let's set that to red. You know, just experiment with it and see what you can come up with. So that pretty much concludes this section. Continue with it, continue going back into 3D coat, experiment with these designs and then see what you can come up with. Okay, excellent. So we'll move on to the next stage in 3D Coat where we'll start focusing on uh, creating buildings instead of characters and then we'll uh, continue on to different software. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that and take care and I'll speak to you later. Bye. Hello, welcome back. So now that you've created a character I want you to create three more, okay? So you can use different textures. You don't have to use the textures that I've supplied. You can use any textures you want. As I've said in the video, you could use something like a helicopter as a texture and apply that to the character and see what results you get. And you can also um, do multiple copies of the same character, right? So you could do lots of different textures on one character or you can model three others, okay? so experiment with it and see what kind of creations you can come up with with this technique okay i look forward to seeing your work and take care i'll speak to you soon bye